Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Mercedes-Benz C-Class. Then I'll take you for driving it, but first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 1.8 C180 Compressor SE four-door saloon. 2008 on a 58 plate, has only done 61,998 miles. 62 obviously by the time I finish this uh, test drive. It was last serviced at 54,133 miles on the 30th of the 10th, 2018. Fuel economy, urban, 26.4, extra urban, 48.7, combined, 37.2, nought 60 in 9.9 .9 seconds, top speed of 136 miles per hour out of 156 brake horsepower, 16 valve engine. It's MOT'd until the 12th of the 9th, 2020, six months road tax is 165 pounds, and 12 months is 300. It's a really nice car, uh, finished in red with grey cloth upholstery. Um, good specification, nothing, nothing too fancy, just all the stuff that you need. Uh, what I always like to see on Mercedes-Benz is uh, the little kind of roundel there on the, on the bonnet. It just, just finishes them off. Mercedes doesn't seem like a Mercedes without that to me. Uh, we've got what uh, seven spoke alloy wheels there color coded door mirrors the aluminium bright work around the top of the windows but the gloss black um, meeting the bodywork electric boot release and it's uh, it's sprung so it opens it's not on rams or anything so nothing too complicated plenty of room in the boot We've got a get your home spare wheel as well but ni nice and tidy nice and tidy in the boot <laughs> now, I, I did i did attempt to get in once but i couldn't so i've had to move my seat forward but anyway now i have done there's plenty of room um Probably, probably not so much for the driver, but uh, I, I won't be sitting in the back too often. It's uh, it's a it's a good car for a, perhaps a smaller family, two smaller kids or something, or, or two not so big drivers. Uh, but nice and comfortable in, in the back. Plenty of headroom, leg room when the the seats move forward. It's got good thick Mercedes Benz carpets on, uh, and they're all like new. Lovely in the back, and it's got the ice fix child seat anchor points in the back here with three inertia reel belts. I'll just take you for a ride in it. So uh, that's the key with the transponder in the end, no blade, just recognises the key. Remote central locking. Just turn that down actually. And you see there that the CD radio, just put that back down there. CD's there, on off switch there. You've also, sorry, you've also got uh, Bluetooth hands free there, which uh, I'll show you how to operate just a bit later on. Cup holders. Let's see if we can. Height and reach adjustable steering wheel. Just um, just a, a nice car, um, a, a nice price rangey car. It is bright from the outside, looks lovely with a private plate on. You wouldn't really know how old it is um, if you're worried about the uh, neighbours. Um, lovely car, drives great, nice inside. Nothing, nothing flashy. It's got cloth seats, which in all honesty, I think are more comfortable than the leather seats. And if anything, the one thing that Mercedes-Benz don't seem to be able to do is make a, a, a nice leather interior. Um, it, don't, don't get me wrong, it, it's, it's okay, but I just don't think it's, it, it, they, they have this ability to make leather look like plastic. Um, and they've done the best to make plastic look like leather with their, their Artico leather. So, 
I don't think you can go too far wrong with cloth, to be fair. Nice, comfortable drive from Mercedes-Benz as well. Reasonably good acceleration there. Nice kick down. Windy today, it was a terrible crosswind. Um, the auto gearbox there, you can use as kind of a manual just by knocking it across the, the left to change down and across to the right to change up. So that's uh, that's in top there. Let's say real heavy crosswind today. It's uh, nice and quiet. So I, I, I think they probably drive drive more comfortable uh, for your passengers than BMs, especially the BMs that've got run flats on and have got everything you need and nothing that's going to be too troublesome they, they did have a problem they, they, they went into this phase where they it's probably a little bit later than this actually this might be an earlier one but the they went into the phase where the audio unit was part of the dash virtually and, and it was like yay big and it was all polished and it used to, it started coming off and then the only way you could repair it was by getting a new radio which was about 900 quid so again kind of false economy and i'm pretty sure that that's going to happen with all the later cars that have these ipads at the front when a car gets to this age and you you bust the ipad what are you going to do with it um and of course if we were selling it a customer had come and they'd want the ipad working or and you just couldn't afford to repair it. Now, I can understand mechanical things and, and safety aspects, we go through those religiously, but <laughs> cars are getting too complicated and uh, each component costs too much money. I mean, in, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't, if you costed out a car that that retails now brand new for about £30,000 and then you tried to buy each part of it um, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't cost about 60 or 70 grand and, and that's the trouble it's okay when they're new these gadgets are fine when they're new but when they're used you're far better off with a car like this that, that hasn't got any uh, stupid things that, that you don't need Oh, guess where you're going, mate, don't worry. It's a um, nice steering, not getting any wobbles. That's another thing these days. Um, this has got seven spoke alloys. If you get any, uh, <laughs> if you get any alloy wheels with less than six spokes, you tend to get with the, the potholes these days and the speed bumps, you tend to get a drive like you're on threatening bits because they end up with flats on them. Um, and at least with an even number of spokes, <laughs> it's not as noticeable as a kind of a Fred Flintstone car. But this lights are on the right here. We've we've got some uh, gun information display in the, the middle there. Again, nothing uh, nothing fantastic, too complicated. You don't need a big thick instruction manual. Nice smooth gearbox. go the Lexus that's broken down that's uh, that's a rare sight unless it's just been transported so 
So we've got cruise control and speed limiter here. The possibility I'm not going to be able to use it. This FedEx guy pulls over. I'm at the moment I'm a lorry sandwich, which I don't like being. All right, we'll get past. So there we go. 70 miles an hour. Cruise control is on. It's just clicked on at 69, so I'll we'll knock it up one. So we're in drive, we're in top, doing two and a half thousand revs. Just make sure, yep. Your instrument cluster, fuel gauge far left, coolant temperature uh, in the same clock over there. In the centre we've got a big speedo and then on the right hand side you've got your rev counter which tells you which gear you're in as well. It also uh, shows you what you've selected just in case you don't know. Just gonna tuck in in a minute. Not gonna be able to if I don't get a wiggle on. Everybody's bunched up. Crikey. this rate I'm going to end up in Scotland. So in the left hand side where the fuel gauge is and also the coolant temperature underneath there's a clock and it's also telling me the speed we're doing in kilometres. I'm sure you can swap that over. A speed limiter there on the same stalk as the cruise control. There we go, that's telling me in the center in the speedo, a digital miles per hour, any messages, next service is due in 215 days, tire pressure monitor, and the date. Automatic air conditioning here. Your, not exactly ashtray but oddments bin with a power socket and we've got lumbar support here but in order to adjust the lumbar support you're going to put your back out so self-defeating really I'm sure that said bedrock on the side there. It must be uh, isn't that where Fred Flintstone lived with a threatening bit wheels on his car. Nice steering. Couldn't keep up with that tipper, but you know. There you've got probably space for cup holders. Your armrest opens and you've got storage space in there. Oddments pocket in the door cards. Your, let's just test these. That's power door mirrors or electric door mirrors. Again, a lot of the cars, the, the door mirrors seize up, and the reason they seize up, they're usually one driver, the guy jumps in or the lady jumps in, sets the mirrors the first day they pick the car up from the showroom, and then unless somebody bumps them, I don't have any need to do it again. So therefore they seize up, and then when they come into stock, <laughs> it costs us about 300 quid to put a new door mirror in, even though you can just do exactly the same again. There's so much waste in the motor trade, it's unbelievable. Um, going on about electric vehicles, that will just be a nightmare. 
I, I just the consequences of electric vehicles just fill me with dread. You've got nice cars like this, which will probably still be going in 2035 when all the electric vehicles and the hybrids that we've sold so far <laughs> are queued up at a charger. Is if you've always wanted to own a Mercedes Benz, the, the chap that had this, he saw our uh, Jaguar, um, which was a beautiful car on, on YouTube, and he, he'd always wanted one. Came down and bought it. Um, nice guy, nice car, and uh, this this will be a good car for somebody else. <laughs> 